Want to get more sales without being salesy? Well, you've come to the right place. Check this out. This is the Sales Gorilla Podcast. All right, welcome back to the Sales Gorilla Podcast with your host, the Sales Gorilla himself, Landon Porter. Landon, how are you doing today, man? I'm awesome, Sauce Nathan. How are you today? I'm doing fantastic. I am happy to be on the call because today we're going to be talking about something that working with you has been a major aha for me in 2019. This was one of the things that completely changed my business around. And I twisted your arm and you said you'd be willing to do a deep dive into it for the listeners today. So I'm excited about today's episode. Yes, let's. Do let's, shall we? So there's only a few pieces of, of business that are actually... Um, requirements, right? You got to know who it is that you want to talk to. You got to know what it is that you can do for them. You got to know how to explain to them why it makes sense for them to do it with you. And then you've got to be able to do your thing. And yeah, I get it. There's more pieces in there. However, it's really that simple. And most people fuck up one or more of those areas and it's really hard and it's a struggle and it doesn't work and da, 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 da. and qualifying is one of those. Most people who are not actual salespeople don't have any idea what qualifying actually is, why it's so critically important, and if you do it wrong, you end up with a nightmare. And as a sales guy, I've sold things where people come back and say, this isn't what I wanted, we're canceling our contract, we want our money back, and we're not talking like a few hundred bucks or even a couple of thousand, we're talking, I've experienced where they charge back 30 110, dollars $200,000 and talk about fucking up your month and your quarter and your confidence about doing your thing all from qualifying wrong. And if you've heard me say positive indifference in the past, this is where positive indifference comes in the second time. The first time is getting into a conversation with somebody, obviously need kills the sale faster than anything. But when you're qualifying somebody and you can tell that, man, if you just say the right thing or two, they'll fucking buy. If you have positive indifference in the qualifying and the selling, the closing of that deal, you will save yourself a lot of headache because you will allow yourself the, the awareness to see the fucking red flags and be like, actually, I'd love to work with you, but you're not ready. Or, man, I'd really love to have a next client, but I can see you're a giant disaster and we're never going to get along. And if you can ask yourself those two questions by and through qualifying people, you will save yourself headache and you'll actually leave yourself open to make more money with other people. That's why qualifying. So, I was doing this all wrong. I was getting onto sales calls. I was putting my messaging out there and I was attracting a lot of people that weren't qualified, but I couldn't tell that they weren't qualified. And when I'd get on a call with them, it felt like I was trying to pressure them. It felt like I was trying to shove a, a, a square peg into a round hole. And man, those calls were the worst. They were, I was nervous. I, I, every time I'd get to the end where I'd actually pitch what it was, even if they were just no pressure strategy calls, I'd get to the end and I was just completely terrified of, of pitching my price, of telling them what it was going to look like. I got rejected left and right. And working with you, you were like, okay, well, you shouldn't even be getting to that point with these people because you should be qualifying them before you even get to that point. Um, I know though that I'm not the only person and I even have clients who do the same thing and they've been in business longer than me. So I know that this isn't something that I was unique in suffering in. Just because you can take her out for a date on Friday afternoon does not mean you should. And a lot of us, especially people who are really good at doing their thing, which is not client acquisition, but they know they have to do the client acquisition thing so they can A, eat next week and B, be able to stay doing their thing so they don't have to go work for somebody else, right? We tend to take on a lot of people that seem to loosely fit into it because, you know, I'd rather just fucking close my eyes now and hope for the best than 
be open and honest. Like, here's the deal. You ought to be really good at the thing that you do. And you ought to be able to slow the fuck down and tell all the wrong people, this ain't for you, right? But a lot of people are stuck in that loop where they think they need that next client when in reality, they just need a next client. And so we don't take the time to figure out, okay, I've had 217 experiences with clients in the last X number of years that I've done my thing and 203 of them have been okay. And out of those 203 that were okay, a hundred of them absolutely sucked, right? Like sometimes even though I got the client, I got the money, I did my thing, like, fuck, if I, if I was working for somebody else, I wouldn't have to put up with this kind of shit, right? There's no need for that. And it simply comes down to taking the time before you let somebody have your thing and actually make sure that they're qualified. What you just mentioned was, is actually, that's a completely different step. That, that comes before they're taking your time, making sure that they're qualified. You got to have a sense of what qualified means. If you have a sense of that, it's pretty easy to pre-qualify people before you waste your friggin' time in conversations with people that oh man, from 200 feet, she looked good, but a face, right? There's no, there's no need for that. And there's so many people that are good at their craft that I don't know if they don't know this or they don't take the time to do it or they don't know how to do it the right way. But fuck, if they would just qualify people a little bit, then they'd be able to pre-qualify people. And if you're able to do that, guess what? Now you're talking for, for the kind of clients I like to work with, you're talking about having a handful of conversations a month and bringing on a new client or two at the most, like really you, you're looking at what four conversations, maybe. Okay, cool. That should be like two and a half, three hours of your time for the entire fucking month. That's all client acquisition needs to be. So when we first talked about this, you asked me, well, are you qualifying people? What are the things that they have to qualify? And I gave some things that were, I don't want to say nonsensical, but I was like, well, they have to have an email list of this many people and they have to have a previous offer and they have to have this and they have to have that. And one of the things that you taught me was really qualifying comes down to five things. And they're pretty much the same five things, no matter what business you're in. And I guess you call that pre-qualifying, but what are those five things? Well, actually, this is qualifying, and we'll get to pre-qualifying in a minute. Qualifying is actually these five steps. It's they've got to want it. They've got to need it. It's actually got to be the right fit for them. They've got to be able to actually pay for it now and get started. Like, I don't know about you, but qualified doesn't mean they're ready in 18 months from now. Like, right? They've got to want it. They've got to need it. It's got to be the actual right thing for them. They've got to be able to pay for it and get started now. That's qualifying. If they meet those five requirements, they're qualified, which means that you can say, cool, Bob, if you want it, here it is, but you're going to have to reach out and take it. Now, how do we get to that? And this is what you started getting into, the pre-qualifying piece. They've got to have a slight understanding of what you do, right? You can't get into a conversation with somebody and try and qualify them as a copywriter if they think you might sell giraffes right? Like that doesn't make any sense. How do we end up in a conversation with somebody who has an idea of what we do? They look like somebody we'd actually want to work with. They know that a, an actual offer is coming and their goal on that conversation is to qualify us and give us enough information to qualify them. How do we get there? Pre-qualifying. Well, this is actually where you were going wrong. Your qualifying was okay-ish enough. You were just trying to qualify people that didn't actually qualify to begin with. And what we helped you change was who they actually needed to be before you ever even got on a phone call, which dictates the kind of, for you, the kind of assets they need to have, right? You said that, well, I, when I was qualifying them, it was, you know, do you have an email list of this site? Well, that doesn't matter what you actually do requires a couple of things to be in place beforehand so you can actually do your job well. That's pre-qualifying, which dictates what assets do they need to have for you to even have a chance at helping them. And then let's turn those minimal assets into 
if they could make your job and your life as easy as possible, what kind of assets do they need to have for that to happen? Different people, right? They, those two groups are drastically different people. And then we get into, cool, we're all on social media. Like I had a conversation earlier today with John. There's no longer a group of people that are internet marketers and a group of people that are not. If you fucking sell something and you are on the internet at all, you're an internet marketer. You might not do it very well or you might be really good at it. It may be your focus and what you do and teach people. It may not. The bottom line is there's no difference between online and offline. So go look them up and ask yourself this. If you were stuck in a blizzard at their house for Thanksgiving and the power went out, there was no way to leave, and you were stuck there with them and their family and people like them, would you be like, you know, this actually isn't that bad. This is kind of cool because these are my kind of people. If you don't know what that looks like when you look at somebody's LinkedIn or Facebook profile, you need to look around your life and go, who in my life do I really not actually like and who in my life would I wish to spend 10 days with alone? It's pretty simple, right? Are they your kind of people? Yeah, you might be able to help everybody that wants it, needs it. It's the right thing for them. They can get started now and they can pay for it. But you're probably going to be doing a way better job for the people that fit all those requirements and the requirements of fuck, I would love to hang out with you. Like, not around business. Let's go do something fun because we both like this and that and this and that. My kind of people. It still blows my mind. I've been preaching the same fucking thing about Ideal Client Avatar for three years and people still go after clients. That they're like, oh, they need the thing I do. They'll give me money for it. I don't fucking like them, but that's okay. Really? God, just blows my mind. Anyways, get off the soapbox. <laughs> no, that's cool. Um, one of the things that I realized, and I, I'm going to give my take on it, and then I'm going to ask you your point of view. I realized that once I was only spending time actually getting on calls with people who I did a little bit of pre-qualifying for, it was so much easier. It was get on a call, talk some stuff through. And at the end, like you say, here's the thing. Do you want to reach out and grab it? Um, what I did notice though also was by not spending so much of my time and energy trying to force bad fits into an agreement, it's made my life to where now I'm, I'm, I, I have five regular clients that I work with and I love them. I love every single person. I love all the projects I'm working on. And for the first time, I love, I love what I'm doing. And uh, I don't know, man, I, I, I just, it's such a, it's such a revolutionary shift and qualifying, I think was the biggest thing there was making sure that I'm doing the qualifying correctly. And because until people are in the back end of my world, they don't see those things that you just talked about. Like everybody wants that, but what everybody wants is the answer to this question. Nathan, are you making more money now that you've been in my world for a while than you ever have in your business? Yes. Okay, cool. So check this out. <clears throat> we actually teach this process and we have a name for what you just described. Easy, yes, conversations. Everybody else in this entire fucking space of sales and marketing and client acquisition talks about overcoming objections and closing and using this script and maneuvering this and fucking how to deal with when they got to talk to their neighbor's dog. Fuck that. There's no need for it. But because there's such a predisposition in the marketplace that we need to sell people. We need to sell them and make the sale and close the deal that people can't wrap their brains around how fucking easy this actually can be. It makes more money. It's way fucking easier. You have more fun. You get to work with fewer people. But hey, if you want to learn how to close somebody hard and overcome objections and all that shit, there's like 30 other people in this space that are bigger and louder on the stage than I am about fucking client acquisition. Go have fun. <laughs> okay, so 
I want to end this episode by asking you this. Because I found doing it your way has made it so much easier when I actually get on a call. I want to talk about qualifying while you're on the call versus qualifying before you're on the call. The pros and cons of each, which kind of qualifying you should be doing at each and why. Mm -hmm. It comes down to it's all in context. It depends on how you're getting your leads. It depends on how your leads are coming into your ecosphere. And it also depends on what you sell. Okay. So pre-qualifying and qualifying have to go in that order. If you do those two things out of order, you're going to be frustrated. People are going to not like you. It's going to be difficult to make money. If you do pre-qualifying and then only qualifying with people that have met that pre-qualifying thing, it doesn't matter how they come into your world. It doesn't matter what it is that you sell. As long as you understand that it's pre-qualifying first, and then if they meet those requirements, then you can schedule time to qualify them. Okay, now, in the context of the way you asked your question, most of the people that are listening to our podcast are going about getting clients from social media, which means first somebody is introduced to who you are. Then somebody is interested in enough to stick around. Then eventually you end up in a conversation. I do all of that via messenger. I don't, you don't have the ability to schedule my time on my calendar unless it's for a specific reason and there's only a certain kind of person that's ever seeing that message. How you do this is natural. How would you naturally have a conversation with somebody at Starbucks? How would you naturally speak to the cashier at the grocery store? How would you naturally talk to the guy who's having lunch that just so happens to drive the Ferrari that's in the parking lot? How would you naturally start a conversation with somebody that it might appear you share some things in common with? Guess what? Doing that on the internet's no fucking different right? You can tell when somebody starts liking your stuff and commenting on your stuff and they're a little bit more engaged in your world and you're like, fuck, man, there's something there. And you go check out the profile and you're like, God, this could be my perfect next client. Holy shit balls. How do you start the conversation? You start the conversation and see where it goes. And in that naturally having that started conversation, you begin to gently pre-qualify them. What's going on in your world? What are you guys working on? I see you do this. How's that going? It's natural. That's the only way I can put it. But you do that before you tie somebody down and try and get their attention for 30 to 60 minutes at a time so you can discover why you shouldn't have set that schedule to begin with. Does that make sense? <laughs> it makes perfect sense. I don't know why it took me so long to figure it out. But once, <laughs> once you sat me down, and you, you kind of gave me a good shaking and you were like, what the fuck are you doing, Nathan? <laughs> and then I was like, oh, wow, this is so much easier. So... We've talked a lot today about some of the behind the scenes stuff, the stuff that goes on in, I, I'm going to give a plug real quick. Influence, Influence Architects is probably the most valuable hour that I get out of the week every week. And a lot of this stuff is stuff that goes on in there. I don't know if you feel comfortable letting people know how to find out more about it or if we should have Brett edit, edit that out of the podcast or not. No, let's leave that in there. Um, Influence Architects is our ongoing mentorship, and it's about all the things behind the scenes. And you, you mentioned a really good point. Before you came into my world, you were doing that whole process of qualifying and pre-qualifying wrong. And what people, what people don't understand is this. The way to run your business is no different than the way you run your life. Like you would never... And I'm, I'm making an assumption because we've not discussed this. You would never go into a club blindfolded and just walk up to a human being and stick your tongue in their mouth. Maybe I'm wrong. Right. There's a process that you go through to get to that point, maybe. 
it's all subtlety. It's all there's a right way and a bunch of wrong ways. And there's not just one right way. There is a right way for every human being. If you're struggling with getting clients, there is a right way that you have not figured out how to do the right way to make that whole process easier. Influence Architects is all about the behind the scenes stuff. What makes you go, oh my God, I fucking get it now. You said it nine times, eight different ways. And this one time it just fucking stuck. And I did that thing. And oh my God, this is amazing. Yeah. Influence Architects. It's our monthly ongoing. It's the mentorship thing that we do. If you're interested in something like that, send me an email at lp at thesalesgorilla.com. And in the subject line, just put IA question mark and we'll have a conversation. Awesome. All right, Landon, another fantastic episode. Before we're out of here, where can people go if they want to check out more episodes of the podcast? Salesgorillapodcast.com, bitches. All right, man. Until next time, we'll catch you later. Peace out, Cub Scouts. I love some of you. I like most of you. There's a few of you I just can't stand, and I'm sure it's mutual. <laughs>